Hello, good evening. You're watching ITV News Central. Staff at Birmingham Children's Hospital say they've had more than 50 calls from concerned families about a former cancer doctor who's admitted sexually abusing boys at another hospital. Miles Bradbury is awaiting sentence for a catalogue of offences against children in Cambridge. He spent four years working in Birmingham, where he treated dozens of young patients. Our correspondent Peter Bean reports. Miles Bradbury appeared in court last month, where he pleaded guilty to a string of sex offences against children, the youngest just eight years old. Bradbury is a specialist in blood cancer. His victims were young patients in his care at Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge. He's admitted 25 offences against 18 boys and making thousands of indecent images. Before working at Addenbrooke's, he was a doctor at Birmingham Children's Hospital, employed as a registrar and consultant between 2004 and 2008. Today, the hospital said they became aware of the allegations against Bradbury in July and immediately wrote to the families of all 250 children he treated. A spokeswoman said they initially had 44 calls in response and a further seven after Bradbury's court appearance. But she added there were no concerns raised at the time that Bradbury was working in Birmingham. Anyone who does have worries should contact the hospital's patient advice and liaison service. Meanwhile, West Midlands police say they have taken calls from concerned parents, but at this time no criminal offences have been disclosed. Miles Bradbury is currently on bail. He's been warned to expect a substantial prison sentence. Peter Bean, ITV News. Next tonight, Mozambique, the former Guantanamo Bay detainee, says he's going to take legal action against MI5 after being held for seven months on terror-related charges. Mr Begg from Hall Green in Birmingham was arrested in February following two trips to Syria. He was due to go on trial on Monday but earlier this week he walked free from prison after prosecutors said there wasn't enough evidence. Tonight Mr Begg said that he met with MI5 before travelling to Syria and that the security service didn't try to stop him. They certainly gave me the green light in the sense that um, they didn't say there was anything wrong with it and there were lawyers present. The crucial part is that lawyers were present on both sides. The Wedgwood Museum collection in Staffordshire has been saved after reaching its target of nearly £16 million. The collection, which includes more than 80,000 works of art, was in danger of being auctioned off to pay back debts. Public donations helped raise the almost £3 million still needed in under a month. Mark Goff reports. It's a decision which no doubt would have delighted the great man himself, Josiah Wedgwood. This remarkable collection of pieces made by his factories as long as 250 years ago was going to be sold off to pay off a pension fund debt. The fear? It would go abroad or be split up. But the art fund, a charity, stepped in with £13 million. They needed another £2.74 million to secure it. And that's when the British public answered the call. Individuals donated what they could to make up the shortfall. Of the 2.74 million that was raised, almost a third of it was donated by people here in the Midlands. What has been so exciting is that has been people whose association with the company, with the area, and people who realised that Wedgwood was very much the heart of the potteries. And they've all dug very deeply into their pockets. And it really is very gratifying to think that the collection will stay here in Staffordshire in perpetuity. It's been absolutely sensational. We obviously believe that the Wedgwood Museum collection should be saved. Thrilled to bits, think uh, how good it is that for a change we're managing to keep something that is our history rather than it being sold to, uh, abroad or for folk who really have nothing to do with it. Wedgwood shaped the pottery industry around the world which is why the modern-day Wedgwood craftsmen still show off their work to visitors, and why buyers from around the world had been circling to snap up the collection. Although we hadn't been approached directly, we had heard the rumours that were flying around of major museums overseas looking to acquire this collection as a whole. In the last few days, the total was raised in part thanks to £100,000 each from Staffordshire County Council and JCB's charitable arm, a fitting move to keep these Staffordshire pieces in the place where they were made. Mark Goff, ITV News. 
A man has been jailed for making fake bomb detectors in his garden shed, which he claimed could find Madeleine McCann. 58-year-old Sam Tree was jailed for three, year, three and a half years. His wife Joan, who's 62, was given a two-year suspended sentence. The couple claimed the devices could track down explosives, drugs and people and sold them for nearly £2,000. They were found guilty in August of making an article for use in fraud. Campaigners from the Support Stafford Hospital group have now set up camp at another site. They've been outside Stafford Hospital with tents since July and are fighting to stop cuts in health services. Overnight they've set up camp outside the University Hospital of North Staffordshire. A driver has had his new £16,000 car stolen after he stopped to remove a sign in the middle of the road. Matthew Witts, a post office worker from Water Orton, said he noticed a stop sign blocking his route on Ford Bridge Road in Kingshurst. By the time he got out of his car to remove it, a thief had got behind the wheel. Police want anyone who saw it happen to get in touch. The boss of Coventry City's owners, Sisu, has been quoted as saying she won't interfere with rugby club London Wasps' plans to buy the Rico Arena. Coventry City Council, which owns half of the firm that runs the stadium, is expected to vote next week on whether a £30 million deal should go ahead. Supporters group Get Cov Back to the Rico claim Joy Sapala has indicated the club is instead pushing ahead with plans to build a new ground in the Coventry area. Six firefighters from the West Midlands have appeared in a short film talking about their experience of living with dyslexia. The film has been praised by the Department for Work in Pension as uh, an example of good practice. The aim of the half-hour video is to raise awareness of the condition in the workplace and encourage others to get help. Callum Watkinson reports. Trained to rescue the injured from car wreckage or battle huge infernos, six West Midlands fire officers have joined a different fight. They are all volunteers. People who are dyslexic. They're challenging the stigma of dyslexia, speaking out about their condition in a film they've made themselves. The title is intended to reflect that there is no typical dyslexic person. The officers in the film have all progressed beyond the rank and file to commander and training roles. I actually realised it's not a disability, it's part of me and it's a gift. It's just how I work, it's a different learning style. When we learn or when we teach people, Make sure he's covered up first. we teach people in a very prescriptive certain way and it's just about stepping back from that and realising everybody's different. There was a time when I wouldn't stand up in front of people and talk, I wouldn't do the things I'm doing now back then um, because I'd mi mix my words up or things would come out wrong so your confidence is really, really low. I spent a long time being ashamed and hiding, thinking there was something wrong and or as stupid or as thick. Dented self-confidence, a common problem for those with this condition, and the awareness created by projects like this eases the burden for the significant numbers who have it. By being on this video, I've already, I've already been called by about five people in two days saying that they think they might be dyslexic, how do I get help? And um, I just want to make a, a positive move for, for everyone with dyslexia basically. Awareness is the issue. It is becoming known in schools now but actually in the workplace it's relatively unknown and the numbers are so large. Um, you're looking at at least 10% of the population and probably another 5% if we include other co-occurring conditions. The half-hour film has been highlighted as good practice by the Department for Work and Pensions and its message is loud and clear. Dyslexia is no barrier to achievement. Whatever path in life, someone chooses to follow. Callum Watkinson, ITV News. Right, time now for a look at the weather forecast. Here's Janelle Aldred. Hello, it's going to become increasingly wet and windy over the next couple of days and just more autumnal and unsettled in general. But first tonight, for most of us, it is a dry night with broken cloud lows of around 12 Celsius. In the far northwest, we see some rain beginning to push in. But by tomorrow morning, will that rain affecting all of us? Heavy outbursts and there will be some blustery winds along with that rain too. But it will push through. So by the afternoon, we are expecting it to be a brighter picture, more in the 
way of sunshine, but it will feel fresher. Highs of just 16 Celsius to today's 19 to 20. That wind is going to be northwesterly. That may knock another degree off. So it's definitely going to be a different feel to what we've had recently. Sunday is a bit drier and brighter, but for tonight, it is dry. Take your umbrellas tomorrow. You're probably going to need them. Well, that's it for tonight. Don't forget to check out our website to get live updates as the news happens across the central we region this weekend. The address is on your screen now, itv.com central. For now, though, from the whole team here, enjoy the rest of your evening. Goodbye.